Hi everyone, I'm Cornelius of Voice Studio East, and this is the 10th installment of the Singing Demystified video series. Previously we explored chest register, falsetto and head register. Today we are going to take a look at mixed voice, a hot-button topic in the world of singing and vocal pedagogy, often treated as a kind of holy grail. It sounds like this. Oh, when I'm like this, you're the one I trust. The defining feature of mixed voice is laryngeal tilt, a stretching and thinning of the vocal folds that helps them vibrate at a higher frequency, but also decreases their resistance to airflow, which means we have to make up for that loss of resistance by adding medial compression. In many cases, this medial compression actually causes the stretching and thinning of the vocal folds, because it increases the resistance to airflow, which is then instinctively lowered by stretching and thinning the folds in order to make vocalization possible without needing a huge amount of pressure. Mixed voice also relies on back vowels and central vowels like O, Ö and A, or on slightly centralizing, that is, slurring front vowels. If you have ever heard a voice teacher talk about needing to slur the words when singing high, this is likely to be the reason. The easiest way to find mixed voice is to establish a slight restraint on your voice, like being about to make a point but stopping yourself. The clicking sound comes from closing the glosses by bringing the vocal folds together. If you have a lot of bodily awareness, you may even feel a slight activation of your core musculature, already generating a little bit of subglottic pressure. It should be a fairly light restraint, with only a very slight activation of core muscles, though. It is possible that you may not feel it at all. From here, we can then produce a slightly furtive sounding note using one of the vowels just mentioned. O is ideal, but many people have trouble distinguishing it from U and O, in which case it may be better to go with Ö or A instead. O While it shouldn't sound outright piercing, there should still be a certain sharpness or focus in the tone. If it is dull sounding, you will likely run into trouble for higher notes. There are two main culprits causing a dull sound, the first of which is hypercompression or grandpa voice, that is using a far too heavy restraint to the point of bearing down on the note and creating a wheezing sound like this. To avoid this, simply breathe out, then back in, hold your breath as shown in the previous two videos, that is, as if you were frozen in the middle of an inhalation, and only then add the slight restraint, making sure not to overdo it. If you are not getting a wheezing sound, but the note is nevertheless dull, it is probably due to a lack of energy. Try pepping yourself up like this, making yourself a bit hyperactive, and then try again a bit louder. It may also be helpful to add a bit more twang, which you can find by imitating a cat meowing, or making a whining sound like this. Wah! So far, we've been working on a fairly chesty mixed voice. When going up in pitch, it is helpful to lighten the sound further, which can be done primarily in one of two ways, corresponding to the mixed voice subcategories of cried mix and pharyngealized mix. Pharyngealized mix is quite advanced, so it will not be covered here, but I intend to return to it in my video on pharyngeal voice, as pharyngealized mix is basically a middle ground between that and regular mix voice. For cried mix, the method we use for lightening is to add a bit of cry quality to the note, which you can do by making your voice sound sad like this. If you have trouble doing this, pay attention to the eyebrows. Making sad eyebrows like this is usually enough to get some cry quality happening. No need to overdo it on the cry quality though. We are not looking for an extremely thin sound. The goal is just to add a little bit of cry quality so we don't need to rely solely on medial compression for mixed voice. When ascending in pitch, mixed voice tends to eventually adopt second formant third harmonic tuning. For more information on this, check the description for a link to my resonance series. 
For our current purposes, though, all we need to know is that there is a certain sweet spot regarding the vowel frontness, which will make mixed voice much more efficient if we make use of it. It is a moving sweet spot. For higher notes, it is closer to a front A vowel, whereas for lower notes, it is closer to a back O vowel. But resonance tuning is less important at lower pitches than higher up, and most of the time when singing in mixed voice, the sweet spot is going to be some variant of Ö. The key thing to understand is simply that it will need to get more fronted as you go higher and less fronted as you go lower, like this. Oh. Another thing to keep in mind when ascending in pitch is that even though we are singing in a restrained manner, we still need a larger mouth opening for higher notes, generally speaking. Fortunately, so long as we don't widen the mouth horizontally too much, we can open the mouth as much as we want without it interfering much with our resonance tuning. And in the really high range, we don't even need to worry too much about keeping the mouth narrow. Generally speaking, I see far more people who use mouth openings that are too small than people who use mouth openings that are too large. Sensations can be somewhat deceptive, so this is an area where practicing in front of a mirror can be very helpful. Don't stand too close to it, though, as this will inevitably tempt you to increase the restraint. Once you have managed to get up into the high range with mixed voice, it will probably still feel very finicky and unreliable. While this could be solved with a lot of fine-tuning, it can also be solved by just doing a whole bunch of drills with perhaps a little bit of fine-tuning later on. In particular, here are two drills, vaguely inspired by speech-level singing, that are very useful for developing mixed voice. First, an exercise on the syllable ne, making sure to slightly centralize a vowel so as not to get stuck in chest register, establish the slight restraint, and sing it in an energetic manner like this. Ne, 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 ne. Secondly, a somewhat more forceful, heavier exercise on the syllable gug to prevent voice cracks and get more thyroid involvement so it doesn't become too thin. You can use your own best judgment to decide which exercise to use in any given situation. Generally speaking, if you need more agility and brightness, go with the ne exercise, whereas if you need more stability and depth, go with the gug exercise. In speech level singing, the goal is to make the intensity even and to keep the larynx in a steady position, all the while transitioning smoothly between chest voice and head voice. I don't care about any of that. The goal here is just to make the coordination as efficient and reliable as possible. Fancy transitions can be learned later. First, we just need to be proficient at the coordinations we wish to transition between. Some of you may be wondering why I am not showing the famous Rossini scale, which is a cornerstone of how many voice teachers approach mixed voice. This is because its wide range places the emphasis on transitions between registers rather than on developing the registers themselves. There is nothing inherently wrong with that, but it is a highly advanced exercise, and if it is assigned to people new to mixed voice, the inevitable result will be that they take mixed voice back down in pitch during the descending part of the exercise, all the way back down into the lower range. That brings us to the final topic of today's video, namely squeezing spirals. A squeezing spiral happens when people push the dynamic range of mixed voice in either direction relative to the pitch they're singing in. It can thus happen if you sing too quietly at high pitches in mixed voice, where you should ideally have transitioned to something still lighter, like falsetto, or if you sing too loudly at low pitches. In the former case, the vocal folds have to stretch even thinner with more compression, and in the latter case, compression becomes a means to achieving loudness, which will lead to more stretching of the vocal folds when going back up in pitch. This latter issue, going too loud with mixed voice in the lower range, is the bigger culprit of the two, and to solve it we need some way of getting loud other than by adding more compression. That is, we need a well-developed chest voice to return to when singing lower notes, and this can even be used as a kind of reset to get us out of squeezing spirals once they've begun. 
This topic too is explained at greater length in my resonance series, so if you want to know more about squeezing spirals, see the description for a link. Do not be too alarmed though, squeezing spirals are not that scary if you have a well-developed chest voice, meaning chest register or call register. Just return to it once in a while so that you don't get stuck in mixed voice. With that said, we've reached the end of today's video. If you have any questions, whether about mixed voice or about anything else, be sure to leave a comment below. Remember to like and subscribe for more content, and as always, thanks for watching.